Hello again. Um, now we're going to look at uh, objectives and readables. Um, usually when I map I write everything uh, the mission's going to have. I will write them in a plain text editor. That makes it easy. I complete here all the text and then I just copy paste it in, in the game. That makes editing maybe a little easier. So let's start with, um, let's say, objectives. So, map objectives. <coughs> and then I can add an objective entity. It appears somewhere. Let's see where it is. I press J, and now I get the entity list. And it was TDM target at objectives. And it's located here, so I will just move it somewhere well where I can find it better if I need it. Usually all the editing of the objectives happens through the objectives editor uh, from here, so basically you don't need to touch this entity. But it's good to <coughs> keep an account where it is, because if it happens to be added into the void then you will get a leak and it's annoying to find. Okay, now the objective entity is found. So, objectives. I choose this and now I can add objectives. And I've already thought what I will do here. There are few. The first objective is to steal the recipe book. I'll just copy paste this objective here and uh, it's incomplete, it, it um, is required to do on all difficulty levels, its uh, initial state is incomplete and then it has these flags, Man it's mandatory, ongoing, irreversible and visible, I think these are all okay <coughs> and then I add this um, objective component and I can choose, okay I don't want to kill anyone but I want the player to possess an item and the item is specified by uh, the name of the entity and I want the player to possess one recipe book and that's that then the second objective is this um, well some people don't like no kill objectives but I'm gonna add them because it's just a s so small mission and it's about stealing pastry recipes, so maybe I think it has a good place. Nobody should die because of some pastries. This I will not complete yet, because I need to research how this objective was made. But I don't want this to be on all the difficulty levels. I will put it only to hard and expert. And I will later figure out how, how this was done. It's about AI is killed boolean not do not kill uh, AI on specified team I put all the AI on team 2 don't kill anyone on team 2 and do not kill 1 do not kill 1 AI of team 2 but usually these objectives needed to have these ongoing uh, flags but I don't remember how to put them but I will research it later this is now a pl uh, placeholder and then the third objective <coughs> <coughs> and third o objective is for hard difficulty um, so that those elite players can have extra challenge they should do no knockouts so let's add this objective and uh, this is only for the expert level and then I add this uh, AI is knocked out do not knock out AI on the team 2, do not knock out, knock out one AI on of team 2. And I will check later, uh, it's the same thing for this, these flags, what they were supposed to be. I can find that information on the wiki, but I will not bother you with that, I will just find it and add it. Good, <coughs> that's three objectives, and then the final objective is the basic exit uh, objective. So exit through the way you came in and uh, this applies to all levels 
and uh, I have to also uh, research how this was done. I don't remember it offhand, but it was somehow uh, put with item is in lo location and any entity with SDK level spawn class. I think it was id player. I will check it. I will go through that later. And then the location should be name of a single entity, which is I, it's an entity I call exit. Oh, and this also needs <coughs> success. Uh, how was it done? Enabling objectives. I need to put one here because this Raphael recipe book need to be completed so that this objective will work. I think it was like that, but I will check it out later. Okay, <coughs> now we have the placeholder objectives placed and then maybe we do some readables. This is a good place for a readable. The empty desk looks a bit boring. So let's place a book here. I uh, create an entity and then we have this readable um, ob uh, readables and these are objectives uh, these are entities that can be edited uh, through the readable editor so let's make a book I don't like this book because it's quite large so I can change <coughs> how it looks like through this uh, spawn arcs I will find the model spawn arc and then I change it to maybe maybe do this red book that's maybe better rotate it a bit move it to a better position and smack it on the table and <coughs> then we will um, write the contents of this book so I choose the book and I go uh, entity readable editor and then we give it a name let's make it uh, accounting always oh, accounting yeah I think accounting is a good name for the book and then I copy paste my text in here and now you see that um, this spills out For example, the text in this box continues and continues, but uh, it doesn't automatically uh, fix or change the page. So that's why it's usually good to copy paste stuff. Also, I want to make a title for this accounting. Title goes to the upper part, and then the body text starts on top of that. So I just hit a few times entering, and then I get it to look good. And now I see that <coughs> this flower text is where it starts overflowing through the page so I choose everything from here and I cut and I paste um, before I go further I think maybe I should change the it would be nice to have all the text for this brief thing uh, on the same opening of the book so I can change the um, how the text looks from here books and then let's see some more kind of readable font which is fairly small let's see I think this JD hand is okay and now I move this flower back here maybe the wages go also here and there. The first readable is now done. It's nicely in, in one book opening and everything is nice. Just one page. And uh <coughs> then we can just pre press save and close. It will create to the map folder, uh, into the xdata folder, it will create the name, uh, file with the name of the mission and then it will add an entry called accounting there. And that's that. Then I had another uh, readable which I wanted to maybe put here on the desk. It's sort of an order for the worker. So I repeat this same thing. Mobile piece of paper. 
I can see from the entity guy text what's the orientation of the text so I put it like this and smack it on the table maybe rotate it a bit so it looks more organic uh, actually I could also rotate this accounting book a bit good <coughs> then let's make this entity readable editor um, order note Yep, and then I copy paste the order. It's just some flavor text, it's not very important. Something about the orders. Maybe make some kind of handwriting looking text. This fits quite nicely. Maybe something. Actually, I will use this JD hand because it's supposed to be the same guy who wrote the accounting. And that's done. Save and close. Okay, so I checked how the objectives were supposed to be set and I did the changes for these uh, no kill and no knockout um, objectives. And basically, <coughs> how it's done, okay, you give the description, then I've said that it happens on hard and expert level, this no-kill objective. And it should be mandatory, ongoing and visible. And then do not kill one AI of team two. And it should be satisfied at start and player respons pr responsible. And I checked, and this is the correct way to do a no-kill objective and <coughs> then for the KO objective it's exactly the same except uh, I want this to be on the expert difficulty level mandatory ongoing visible satisfied at start and player responsibility player responsible and that takes care of that and next do this let's do this exit uh, objective for that I will go to the exit location which is this door and I will make a big brush maybe of this size yep and then I give it the texture common clip it, yeah, clip texture and I have to not stop filtering clip texture so it's visible it is visible here's the monster clips and then we have the just this clip and uh, then I will create an entity I think it was target no it's info info tdm objective location yes so this clip needs to be ma made into info tdm objective location like that and then let's give it a name play player exit player exit and then we go to the objectives and find this exit and it's supposed to be on all levels it's mandatory and visible and uh, in order for this objective to be completable the objective number one must be completed and objective number one is to steal the recipe book uh, these nothing needs to be put here and item is in location let the target entity player it's very important it's written like this ID is small be capitalized P and layer and then the name of the ex uh, ex uh, exit entity which was in our case player exit and that's it now all the objectives are done but not all objectives are done because we have this steel recipe book objective which say says that the player must acquire an entity called recipe book I will copy this name and uh, now we need to make the recipe book, the objective which is to be stolen. I wanted to place it somewhere here. 
so I create an entity and now we have these items custom custom movab uh, movable custom item so this is an item that goes to the inventory sounds like exactly the thing we need so let's put that but it has this ugly box and of course it's to supposed to be a book so I can look at this book and get the model from there and now it's a book um, let's name it recipe book maybe change the I'll make it a small one and uh, it's not gonna be a hard object we want to have it the same bouncing sound as the book uh, which is that one and then we need to give it a name and the name was recipe book so now when the player picks th this up the objective will be completed um, also I want it to set it so that it cannot be dropped so the player can't accidentally drop it anywhere and it doesn't need to target anything and then, then I think it's ready I will quickly test uh, yes so we don't need this comments pavanarg I'm removing that and then we need to give it a name recipe book now that the player gets announced that you picked up the recipe book um, and then we need it wa want it to have some kind of icon now it doesn't have any this is like blank so I will steal the icon spawn arc from that book and there now the um, book objective is or the objectives are now complete let's next look how to hide this book now the good thing that we have these wall modules as punk statics one good thing is that we can always turn them back into world spawn and we can edit them further and what I will do now is that I'll make a hidden compartment in this space so that when the wife is sleeping here the player should be silently come here and check this and find them find them uh, hidden compartment so let's make this little secret now so I will start by reverting this back to world spawn and then I will turn this book so that it sits top right like that and then we need to make a, a compartment roughly of the size of this book maybe in here the compartment door will be here so let's move the book here now we know the rough size of what the compartment is supposed to be and now I choose this face only the face is chosen this is control shift and now I press this create decals and what I'm doing is that I want to make a small, a small um, indicator that there is some something weird here which might the player can see that there might be something if they are observant and we want to reward this observance so now I created this decal so it's basically a p patch with a texture applied on it and then we had a really nice looking it's good for secret doors and compartments dark mode decals uh, it's dirt it's not very good category for this but that's where it is looking 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 painting wall crime you see it adds, adds just this tiny dark edge 
Usually when you make secret compartments or secrets, it, it's very useful to make it so that they are somehow visible, but not too obvious. It's, an, it's a difficult art. Yeah, I think that's alright. And now we need to cut this uh, world spawn wall uh, according to this decal we just we just made. So let's see, not there, almost there. How does it look? Yeah, I think that's that's a good direction to cut. So shift enter, it's cut. Then I need to cut according to this wood. Getting there. That's good. Cut. Oops. I was supposed to cut this one. There. And then according to this wood. Perfect. And then according to... Oh, I did it incorrectly. Let's try again. There. And then uh, according to this darkened part. Yeah. And this is now the uh, decal. I will hide it. I don't want to delete it. And this is now the world spawn piece. And I will just make this a little smaller. It's just a hatch. And uh, I hide that, I hide the book. And now I need to figure out some kind of good texture for the interior of the um, secret compartment. Maybe I'll make it, make it just some kind of wood. No decals, wood. Let's see. Some kind of, yeah, this very dark wood is fine. And I play press S and then I just apply the texture. Some kind of scale it looks good. That's decent. Now I'll hide the decal, I'll hide this, and then I have the book. I stuff the book inside the hidden space. I don't want to put the... I leave it a bit hanging on top so that <laughs> if it sinks into the geometry the player can't have it, so that would be a disaster. Good. Now I choose this little door, and then I return the grime piece, and now I choose them both. And now I will create a door. I will move this a bit outwards here. I will actually make it a separate one. So this is now a separate funk static. Uh, I will make it non-solid. I don't know if these decals are solid or not. This is just to play it safe. And then I have this small, small piece of world spawn. I make it into a funk static. And then I will make it into a door. Uh, I think it's in movers. Doors. Mover door. That one. And now we need to move the origin because doors always rotate around the origin. If you remember this door, you see that the origin is here on the side, so it will rotate around this side. So now if we would um, rotate this, it would rotate around this, and that looks bad. So we want to open it to open like a door. There. 
and then we need to figure out which direction it rotates so I'll look it from downwards and I want it to open clockwise so outside so the rotate spawn arc should be positive uh, rotate it's positive it now opens 90 degrees mm. it could open a little, little more maybe 100 degrees like that and now I will give it a name uh, secret box and then I will take this funk static and I will bind it onto the secret box so that it opens with it and now it's also good I select everything surrounding it and I will hide them and I see that oops I forgot to do something to these areas I cut so I will just apply or maybe I apply this plaster texture on it choose only that not not the patch but the door itself actually I need to choose all the sides that way and now we'll, I will paste shader there are some problems here, so I will fix them. That way. That way. And this was alright. Good. And now when we <coughs> when we have doors or, or um, any kind of compartments. Now that we have this kind of compartment made, there is a risk that the player could, from correct angle, they could throw this book and take it from this uh, area without opening the door. There is a simple way to prevent that, and it's usually already uh, ma pre-made in most of the furniture prefabs. So let's have a look. I will import a prefab called this desk flip down multi skins and it's a desk and when we study how it was now it's grouped when it comes into the map I will ungroup it and now we can study how it was put together um, there is the door and we can see that the door targets some kind of desk throb control thing and it's triggering this when it's opened and it, when it's fully closed. So let's see what this desk prop control is. It's not visible because it's clip texture and I have I've hidden all the clip textures and now we can see what it is. And you can see that this brush um, overlaps with all the objects inside the desk and what this does is that it sets everything within its volume to be not probable. So when this door is closed you can't take anything from the uh, desk and when you open it you will trigger this entity and then it will change so that you can uh, the objects are allowed to be propped and then when you close it it triggers this again and then the objects are not probable so that's how, how easy it is and remember that everything that touches this brush will be set not probable. So this means that this door would be set not probable unless it has this immune to target set prob probable spawn arc on it. So I will just copy the good stuff from here. Um, I will hide clip textures. So firstly I will put this immune to target se set probable to this door we made. Actually, I won't put it on this uh, funk static, this decal, but I will apply it on the door. There, that's done. Then we can make the actual clip texture. I'll just... Um, well, what is the most easy? I can clone this. I clone this piece and then I put it here. And snap it to grid and then I move it so that it fills the space inside like 
like that. And now we will give it the texture clip. Come on, clip. I will. I will fit the. Oh no, it just went away. I will fit the. Okay, now it's visible. Oh, it's too tall. There. So now I can see easily. Okay, this is the clip texture. And what was the name of the entity? I'll make it to funk static, but that's not the correct one. I'll check it from here. It's supposed to be target set probable. So I will just press this button and apply. Okay? And then then I make give this a name, let's say um Secret Frob. Okay. And then we were supposed to add more spam orgs on it. I can just copy these from here. Trigger on close was required. That's done. Then trigger on open was required. Ready. And then we need to of course target the actual thing, so I choose this, then I fly so that I can see the clip, and then I press Ctrl K. And now we are targeting the secret frog. Uh, is everything... Uh, I think if this is everything we need... Let's have a look... I think that's everything. There is some fine tuning, of course, like like giving it proper sounds, for example, and then and let's see locked. It's not locked. That's good. And uh, here I can change the open opening sound. So now it sounds like this. I wonder what would be good sound for it. I will just... I wonder if there were some container... Container sounds in here. World containers. That's good sound for it. Mm -hmm. And then let's give it a close sound. Close. Now it sounds like this. Uh-uh. Sounds a bit too heavy. It was... World containers, chest wood. Yeah, that's a good sound. There. So I think now everything is done. So and yes, you're right. I can't demap anything if this is sitting in the void. So I get rid of it, and then let's test. I don't like to be be beaten up by swords. So let's go have a look at the. Hidden compartment. You can just barely see it, but you can see it if you look carefully. So it's it's pretty. It's not obvious, but I think an observant player will notice. Yeah, works. And I can get the book now. But now I can't. And the objective was completed. And let's see if I can get out of here now when the book is mine. Mission complete. I have beat my own mission. Interestingly, for some reason this family of textures do not have in this shader definition, they don't have the components that make frob highlighting possible. Frob highlighting means that when you approach a frobable object like this door, you know how it lights up in the darkness. This doesn't, because this texture was probably never designed so that uh, it w would 
frob highlight. So I can't get this um, this hidden door to frob highlight without making new material definitions, and I'm not gonna do that. Um, so I just changed this texture so it looks even more jarring. So now this is. I will show you what I did. If I copy this texture, I have this normal texture. Oh, well, the texture you see here. But this is different texture. So I just took this one and applied it to here. And it generates this very obvious change in the texture. So the player should immediately, hopefully, notice. And even though it doesn't produce the prop highlighting, maybe the player will notice it. I hope. I will now report uh, to the team that these textures don't have the prop highlighting stage. So in the end I decided to make this door also have the same texture that is here. And now I got it to prop highlight with nbore one more's help. So basically I made a new material file called bakery MTR, which is located in the dark mode materials folder, and this is just a copy of the uh, shader definition for this texture. But I added with Nbor one more direction. I added this part, which now makes the door have the proper prop highlighting. You don't probably need to do this kind of thing. This was very rare. <laughs> find that actually that the uh, textures didn't have this prop highlighting. In the end I will make this wall back uh, to funk static. Like that. So I think this is good time to conclude now the objectives and readables part.